When Kenyans travel to South Sudan, their chances of death increase dramatically. It is like dicing with death, for you could be shot just for being a Kenyan. Four Kenyan truck drivers have allegedly been shot dead under unknown circumstances in South Sudan. Dozens of truck drivers have held demos to protest the killing of their colleague in South Sudan. And there are reports that more than a dozen Kenyan truck drivers have been killed in South Sudan. Move on now and the bodies of three Kenyans killed in South Sudan last week during an ambush on a humanitarian convoy arrived in Nairobi this afternoon. The Kenyans were arrested on May 29, 2015 by the National Security Service of South Sudan. The South Sudanese do not argue, they shoot. And you are the target if you are a Kenyan. Southern Sudan to act on our behalf on the behalf of the government so that you, you can uh, protect our people the way our government and we the Kenyans people have protected your people if, were, if we are not these drivers are here I don't think Southern, Southern Sudan, can, Sudan can survive I am very bitter when I am almost every day receiving news that our people has been uh, shot in Southern Sudan Others are being tied with ropes, others are being dropped as if they are criminals. Hilarious, they are coming to southern Sudan to deliver goods. South Sudan is one of the most dangerous destinations for Kenyans. Many Kenyans have lost their lives there. This is ironical because Kenya played an extremely important part in the independence of southern Sudan in 2011. It is the world's most recent sovereign state. The nation used to be part of Sudan, a huge, unwieldy state in eastern Africa that was torn apart by religious, cultural, and racial divisions, animated by international interference. Both the Sudan and South Sudan are currently in turmoil. While South Sudan is torn apart by ethnic division, Sudan is in the middle of bitter war over the control of government between the ruling military junta headed by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and a paramilitary force under General Mohamed Hamdan Degalo, widely known as Hemedti, who used to be vice president until war broke out in 2023. South Sudan has since independence suffered major political instability linked to ethnicity, it has experienced several civil wars that have been remarkable for their human rights abuses, including ethnic attacks bordering on genocide. The main personalities in these conflicts have been President Salva Ki Mayardit, a Dinka who succeeded the founding President John Gaang, a fellow Dinka, after he died in a mysterious helicopter accident, and Rik Macha, a Nua who is seen as the outsider fighting for inclusion. Educated in the United Kingdom, some Dinkas see him as a lackey of the West, although his claims of exclusion could be real given the clannish nature of the Juba regime. But the breakout of violence in 2013, following the fallout between President Salva Kiir and his then deputy Riek Machar, saw majority of dreams and expectations of these organizations go down the drain, forcing most of them to either scale down their operations or close down altogether. The two reconciled and formed a coalition government in 2018, but the country has remained unstable, with many armed gangs that terrorize people and attack visitors, particularly East Africans. Most of those visitors happen to be Kenyans. Kenyans go to South Sudan as truck drivers, traders, farmers, teachers, construction workers, health workers, civil society, international aid workers and as consultants of all kinds. Kenyans, known for their entrepreneurship, have also ended up in Sudan in search of opportunity as hawkers, hustlers, importers, dealers and runners of various items. I left Kenya after the post-violence because I lost my business and when I watched 
a television one day, I, I saw the South Sudanese ambassador telling people to come and invest in South Sudan. Kenyan women, a huge attraction for Sudanese men, have also arrived in South Sudan in droves and not every one of them is a legitimate wife of a Sudanese man. The go-getter aggressiveness of these Kenyans meets up with the war-traumatized Sudanese and the results is simply explosive. Needless to say, the losers are obviously Kenyans. Faced by angry, traumatized and armed South Sudanese, Kenyans, who don't even know how to use guns, and are scared of tire bursts in Kenyan cities, are easy prey. No reasoning, bluffing, or conning is able to save them in most cases. Kenyan truck drivers bear the blunt of the unprovoked attacks. They are stopped at gunpoint and either shot or kidnapped. Ransom is sometimes demanded. At other times, the drivers are forced to record videos castigating or supporting one of the political factions. UAP has continued with its investment in this country with the construction of the UAP Equatorial Tower, the tallest building in the country, at 15 stories high, and now contributing to UAP's bottom line. Salivating for the huge opportunities in South Sudan and eager for its companies to expand to the South Sudan, Kenya often appears to be reluctant to exert pressure on the South Sudanese government to stop these incidences. Ugandan truck drivers often suffer the same fate as the Kenyan drivers. More Kenyans are killed simply because there are more Kenyans going to South Sudan. Kenya authorities do not pressurize the South Sudanese government enough. With so many South Sudanese living in Kenya and coming to shop here, a leverage must be found to stop the suffering of Kenyans in South Sudan.